Hello and uh, welcome to another Python tutorial. Uh, this time we're talking about loops. We've talked about variables, we've talked about arrays and lists and all that, and we've talked about conditional branches. Now we're moving up in the world and we're going to talk about loops. Before we get going on um, this week's assignments, and um, uh, let me talk about loops real quick. Loop is a section of code that you want to loop, that you want to repeat over and over and over again until a uh, condition is no longer true or for a set amount of times. Um, uh, all programming languages do loops in, in slightly different ways, and yet there's two main um, loops. The first is a for loop, and you'll notice it turns blue there, which means that the IDE here on REPL recognizes it. Um, and a for loop is a loop that you want to repeat for a certain amount of times. Usually the um, the programmer is saying, I want this to do this many times. I, I want a range here uh, where this is going to loop. And then our second type of loop is a while loop. A while loop um, is a loop that you want to keep repeating until a condition is no longer true. Sometimes that condition is dictated by another program that's running. Sometimes that uh, is uh, dic condition is dictated by the user. And so, um, so those are your two main loops in, in Python. Other programming languages add some variations of those and combinations thereof. But in Python, it keeps it simple. That's why I like Python. Great language because there's just two basic loops. Um, and you don't have to think more of that. Uh, Java has what's called a do while loop, which is kind of a weird thing, but this isn't Java. Um, so we have a for loop and a while loop. Um, so the way to think about a loop is start back with conditional branches. Remember, conditional branches are if. Um, conditional branches is a branch of code that only runs once and only runs if that condition is true. A loop is like a conditional branch, except it runs and keeps running um, for a set amount of times or while a condition is true. And so the if loop will only run once. A conditional branch is a loop that but only runs once. It doesn't loop, right? It's a loop that doesn't loop. Whereas a for loop or a while loop um, runs and keeps running, keeps repeating over and over and over again until uh, the, the range is up or until uh, the condition is no longer true. So um, before we get to the assignments, let me just show you uh, kind of how each loop works. So we'll start with the while loop because it's a lot easier to kind of code and understand. So right now, I'm just going to say, um, I'm going to declare a random variable. Remember, variables are the building block of computer programs. The top of every program you write, you should have your variables declared. And the first step of any given computer program that you write should be define your variables. So we're just going to start by defining a simple variable. I'm just going to call it number. And I'm going to start it at zero. It's going to equal zero. And then I'm going to, so I'm going to write a while loop. And I'm going to say while number continues to, uh, well, actually, I'm going to use is less than 100. We're going to print the number. We're going to print that variable. And we're going to add one to the number. That's called incrementing a variable, by the way. Number is going to equal number plus one. So every time this loop repeats, um, the number, it's going to print out what the number is. And then it's going to add one to the number. And then it's going to check to see if the number is still less than 100. And if it's not less than 100, it's going to stop. So let's go ahead and run it. And you'll see it counts to 99. Uh, that's how we get it to count to 99. Notice we said less than 100. That's why it stopped one short of 100. If I add less than or equals to, it will hit um, 100 right there. There we go. Hit 100 right there. By the way, if you ever just want to clear your... Um, What's down here? You just hit this little clear button right here. Uh, that's a helpful tool for clearing your console, or else it'll just keep adding to it. So, so that's a while loop. Pretty easy. We just say while this condition, while this variable remains less than or equal to 100, print it out, add one, and then it will terminate. Um, so then a for loop is a little bit different. Um, so, um, so a for loop you specify a certain amount of times. And how you do this, for loops are hard. Beginning programmers really struggle with them. Uh, and I really struggled with them when I was a brand new computer programmer. But uh, what you do is you basically define a variable. And you can name your variable whatever. Um, but most for loops, we use X or we use Y or we use Z. We use typical algebraic uh, notification there, nomenclature, or whatever you want to call it. So we said for X, and then you type in, 
and um, and there you can specify a range or um, a, like a range, which is what we're going to do, or you can use a, a variable like an array, but we're just going to say for x in range, and then in parentheses, we're going to tell it where to start and when to stop. Um, and so uh, we're going to start at zero and we're going to end at five. And then we need a colon, because once again, this is conditional branching. It works just like conditional branches. Loops are just branches that run over and over again, not just once like conditional branches. And then underneath it, make sure you tab in. Tabs count in Python. They don't matter as much in other programming languages, but they matter a lot in Python. So make sure you tab in. And everything tabbed in under your loop is going to be what repeats. The next time something is tabbed out, it won't repeat. I'll give you an example of that later. We're going to print hello. There we go. That's what we're going to do. Um, and then, so I can show you what I was just talking about, I'm going to do another line of code, but it's not going to be indented. And I'm just going to print something like end of loop so you can see it. Um, so now when we run it, it's going to print hello five times. See that? One, two, three, four, five. Um, so we basically said for x in range zero to five, print hello. And xx is a variable and it sets it to zero. Remember, all computer counting starts at zero. And then it adds one, two, three, four, and it stops just short of five. Uh, however, the, in this case, the fact that computers start at zero is actually helpful to you because this second number will be how many times the loop repeats. Uh, so we said, we want you to print hello five times, but we had to do it in a fancy way to get the computer to understand. We had to set up a variable x and then x equals zero. So it prints hello and then it keeps repeating it until x equals five and then it stops. Um, and then notice it said end of loop at the very bottom just once. Once again, that's because the, the print line isn't indented. Watch what happens if we indent the print line. See, it printed it in every loop because it was indented under the for loop. And so once again, everything indented is going to be what's in the commands that loop. If anything is not indented, it will not loop. It will just print it at the end like that. So, um, so yeah, so that's how for loops work. Okay, so now let's talk about um, one of the best uses for for loops, which is arrays. And now we're getting into the assignment for the week. Um, so um, remember an array is a list of things saved to a variable. Uh, so it's a list of data, of data uh, a group of data, if you will, saved to one name. So um, we're going to do some names, uh, which will help us with the assignment. And I'm just going to type some random names. Remember, when you're making an array, you have to put commas outside quotation marks because the commas differentiate between the data types. So I'm going to do a Ben. I'm going to do a David. I'm going to do a Greg. And um, your assignment is to make a basketball team. So I'm going to do five names here. I'm going to do a Billy. And I'm going to do a William. And so we have two Williams on this basketball team, so we call one of them Billy uh, to cut down on confusion. So now we have names. Um, now watch what we can do. So we say 4x in range 0 to 5, and we're going to print names and x. And now um, it will print out the names. Yep, it should print out the names. Nope, we got a traceback error. Um, I thought names was pretty clearly defined there. I don't know about you. Uh, this is called problem solving by the way. Weird. Um, yeah, but I don't know what caused this because names is totally uh, defined. So we, we defined names. I once again, I have a practice over here, so let's compare it. Um, yeah, that should have worked. Um, I don't know why that didn't work because we have names. Dang. Um, it says names is not defined, but I totally defined it. It's defined right there for X and range 0 to 5 print names. And look, it even recognizes it. Um, oh, I forgot the equals. Huh. So even your teacher here makes stupid little syntax errors all the time. And little, Okay, I forgot to say names equals. Make sure in line one you have names equals. I hope that was educational for you. That was really, really dumb of me. Uh, but even the most experienced computer programmers make dumb mistakes like that. So there we go. Now we'll print out the names. We're back on track. Uh, so there you go. It took me a little bit to figure out the dumb little mistake I made there. Uh, so there we have it. Names equals Ben David. And it, so it printed out five names. Notice what happens. If I change from two to five, watch what happens. It just printed off the last three names. That's because X is standing in for the index 
Ben is index 0, David is 1, Greg is 2, so it started at 2, 3, 4, and it stops one short of 5. So we can say 2 to 4, and it will just print out two names. So it stops short of this index. So, uh, so names x, and x starts at 2, and then it prints 2 and 3, and then it stops at 4, and that's how a for loop works. So uh, something else really cool here uh, that goes with your assignment is um, you can actually then use um use some embedding um and some concatenation to actually print out a string every loop um and so we're going to create a string and we want to say hi my name is now we can't just say plus names um uh with the index actually i think we can so let's go ahead and do that uh maybe it might not let us but there's another trick um once again names x let's see what happens there yeah um, if these are numbers up here, it wouldn't let us do that. Um, and so just beware of that. Uh, but you see, hi, my name is, and then we said every loop print, um, print the names variable, the, you know, the X is the index and names is a variable. So look at the names variable and print whatever index X is. X starts at zero. So it prints Ben, David, Greg, Billy, William. So kind of a cool thing. So the assignment was to assign the, have a loop that assigns each one of these to a position in basketball. So I'm going to create another um, assignment that says positions, another variable that says positions, and we're going to type the standard basketball positions in there. Um, and here's where I do have to cheat because uh, I forgot what they are. Center, power forward, uh, center forward. I'm just going to copy this over. Um, there you go. Uh, and then you can pause this and, um, and make sure you get it right. So there you go. Um, that's how it should look right there, line two. Um, so line two. So we have names and we have positions. So now watch what we can do. Um, okay, we have hi, my name is, and then their name, and then we'll add to that. And I am playing the, right? And then we're going to add. Uh, positions. We're going to concatenate it. That's a fun word to say. Uh, and then um, position. And we'll do an exclamation part just so they're they're eager to play. They're excited. They're playing some basketball. So exclamation part. And let's see if that runs. There you go. Um, so there it just, it loops through twice. And we used X. Um, we used X uh, both to fill in for the index of names and the index of the positions. Because X is just saved to a number in a for loop. X starts at 1 and it stops just short of 5. So it print, I'm sorry, it starts at 0. It stops just short of 5. So it said print name 0 and then print position 0. Um, and then it loops through again and X now equals 1. So it said print name 1 and print position 1. And then now it looped back and now X equals 2. And then 3, 4 and that stops just short of 5. And there you go, it prints out perfect. Um, other than, I need to add a space right there so that it kind of looks cleaner like that. Isn't that cool? So um, looping through variables like that, uh, looping through arrays is actually uh, one of the main uses for loops. It's one of the most popular way to use for loops is to get it to loop through um, a variable. Uh, so that's kind of a cool thing. I do wanna show you in class, some kids have done this. They've said zero to 10, watch what happens. Uh, it does print it, but then you get a traceback error because it goes to print the number five position, which would be the sixth name and sixth position, and it says we can't find it. So that's a traceback error. It means we can't trace back to the sixth position. We could only do the five uh, because each of these variables only has um, these five names. So uh, this number right here has to be how many items you have in your array up here. Um, so, uh, so that's a common mistake people make. So then your second assignment was using a while loop. And this is one of the more difficult assignments. So follow along carefully, pause this video when you need to, to look at the code. Um, and so right beneath it, right beneath this, we're going to go down and now we're going to create a while loop. And the problem is this, um, and so this is actually a pretty popular, uh, programming problem for early programmers, for beginning programmers, and it's the moon weight problem, right? So, uh, on the moon, you weigh 16.5%, um, of what you weigh on earth. Um, so you weigh 16.5%. So the problem is this, uh, let's say you move to the moon and you're going to live on the moon until you weigh 200 pounds. And then you're going to leave the moon. 
Um, and so 200 earth pounds that is. So the, you want to create a while loop that prints out for every year. We're going to pretend that every year you gain a pound. Once you hit 30, every year you gain two pounds. Isn't that sad? It's tragic. It's horrible. It's one of the evils of life. Uh, but we're going to say you're just, you're good. You exercise. You're just going to gain one pound. Um, and then you're going to leave the moon uh, when you weigh 200 earth pounds. So that uh, that's a good time to leave so that the earth weight won't crush you. The gravity of the earth won't crush you. So, um, so you want to have a starting weight whatever you start out at, and then you want to loop through and get the computer program to print out what your earth weight is, moon weight is for every year um, that you are on, that you live on the moon, assuming that you gain one pound a year. So uh, we want to start with declaring our variables. So I want you to think real quick, uh, maybe pause this video and think real quick, what are our variables going to be in this problem? What is the information the computer needs to know in order to run this program? Okay, well, there's three. One is we need to know what year it is, and we're just going to start the year counter at zero. So the zero year we're on the moon, and then one, two, three. If you want to use, you know, uh, our years and you want to start in 2021 or whenever you're watching this video, you can. But I'm just going to count the years of that I've been on the moon. That's one variable we need. The next variable we need is earth weight. And that's gonna equal whatever you want it to equal. If you wanna be honest about your weight, you can. Uh, I'll go ahead and I weigh about 155 pounds on the average day. Um, that's of course, if I've just gotten out of the shower and I have two pounds of extra water on me to weigh the, the, the scale down. Um, so <laughs> that's a joke. It's 155 to 160 is what I weigh. Um, and then the third variable is your moon weight, right? There, the computer needs to know your moon weight. And in this case, moon weight is actually a calculation. Uh, it is your earth weight right? Times 0.165. Um, so 16.5%. Uh, so that translates over to 0.165. Uh, hopefully you know how to do math, right? So, so those are the three variables the loop needs to run. Remember, every computer program, you start by declaring your variables. So then we'll enter down to the actual program itself. And it's always a good idea to have the variables and then a space between. So I could just see these are your variables. This is your branch. So we're going to use a while loop, right? And we're going to say while year is, oh no, sorry, while earth weight, while the variable of earth weight is less than 200 pounds. Now, once again, we don't say LBS here because I'll just throw everything off. We're just going to use straight numbers. So while the earth weight is 200 pounds, then we need a colon to indicate we're beginning a branch of code, telling the computer we're beginning a branch of code. And then everything indented underneath it will repeat. And we want to do a few things. The first thing we want to do uh, is we want to print the year. So we want to say print, right? Uh, we'll create a string and say the year is, um, and here's where things get tricky. This is another thing you need to know. Um, when we embed numbers in Python, we actually can't use concatenation. So up here, we use some concatenation. Down here, we actually have to use a different tactic to embed it, and that is using a placeholder. In Python, the percentage sign is the placeholder. And so, and then we put an S after it to indicate there's going to be a string there or to convert whatever into a string there. So placeholder S means means this is a placeholder for a string and convert whatever into the string. And then instead of using the plus sign, after the string ends, we just repeat the placeholder and we put what variable uh, we want to include there. So we said the year is some sort of a thing that needs to be a string. And then after the string, we say, oh, by the way, the placeholder is the year. Uh, so right now, if I hit play, I think it will just keep saying the year is zero over and over and over again. Yep. And it's not going to stop. Notice this is getting smaller down here. It's just printing it, printing it, printing it, printing it, printing it, because the loop's never going to end because earth weight is 155 and it remains 155 and we've done nothing there. So, uh, but we know the print function worked. Once again, you can clear your, um, clear your, uh, console down here. Okay. The next thing we want to do is we want to print the earth weight. We want to say your earth weight is and once again we're going to use placeholder string and after we're going to say placeholder earth weight right and then the next thing we want to do is print the moon weight your weight on the moon is placeholder string and then afterwards we say fill the placeholder with the moon weight 
Um, then, okay, we want to print all that out to the user, but we're not done yet, right? Once again, if I hit run, it's just going to print the everything over and over and over again. So we want to, we have to add some, some math in there for the computer. So the first thing we want to do is we want to say year equals year plus one. So every time this loop repeats, it's going to add one to the year so that next time the loop repeats, it's not going to say the year is zero. It's going to say the year is one. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to add one to the earth weight. Earth weight equals earth weight plus one. So we added one to the earth weight. And then after we add one to the earth weight, it's very important. The very last thing in our loop should be your moon weight, but it's not going to be plus one. It's going to be whatever 16.5% of earth weight is. And so once again, it's going to look exactly like nine, line 9 up here. Line 9 is moon weight equals earth weight times 0.165. So we want to say earth weight times 0.165. That's what we want to do. So every time the while loop repeats, it's going to keep repeating as long as earth weight remains under 200. Uh, so in this case, it's going to repeat about 45 times, 44 times. Um, and then it's going to print out what the year is, what the earth weight is, what your moon weight is. And then it's going to add one to the year, add one to the earth weight, and, add, and multiply whatever the new earth weight is by 0.165. And then when it hits 200 up here, when earth weight hits 200, it's going to stop. So now we can run it. And there we go. Uh, so the last one is, uh, in 44 years, my earth weight is going to be 199. I hope not. And my weight on the moon is going to be 32.8 pounds. I, by the way, is that incredible? That's incredible. Uh, that I weigh, if you weigh 200 pounds here, that's only 32 pounds. Most of you can lift 32 pounds. I can lift 32 pounds. Uh, so, uh, that's just wild. Like, you know, I could throw you on the moon, uh, if you weigh 200 pounds. So isn't that, isn't that crazy? Uh, like I could throw you across a canyon, I think. Um, so like a football, well, football's way less than that. So, so there we go. And you can scroll up through the loop and look year one, I weigh 156 pounds and 25 pounds on the moon. Year two, I weigh 157 and 25, almost 26 pounds. Year three, I do weigh 26 pounds and you can kind of see how it goes. So hopefully you've learned something here. Uh, if not go back and kind of pause things where you need to. And look at that, but uh, this is all about loops. You have your for loop, your while loop, um, and um, yeah, kind of fun, isn't it? So let me know what questions you have. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, I look forward to looking at your assignments if you're in my class, or I just look forward to hearing from you uh, if you stumbled upon this on the interwebs and thought it was helpful. If you didn't think it was helpful, I don't care. Don't contact me. Ha, just kidding. Well, actually, well, just kidding a little bit. Uh, have a great day.